Credentials Roundtable. Welcome to our Digital Credentials Roundtable. I'm Kelly Hoyland. I'm the Higher Ed Program Manager here at IMS Global. I'm happy to help facilitate these events throughout the year. Um, today, we've got two of my great colleagues here to share their story. Before we get started, I'm gonna launch a poll just so we have a better idea of who's in attendance today and where you are in your Digital Credentials projects. So if you could take just a minute to do that while I do some housekeeping things, I would appreciate it. So this uh, roundtable is being recorded today and you will have the ability to unmute and ask questions later. So I would ask that you remain muted uh, during our presentation and use the chat if you have any questions or, or ideas you would like to share during our presentation. And if you um, later, when we have time for questions and answer, want to unmute, you're welcome to do that or you can raise your hand and we'll unmute you at that point. So thank you um, for doing that so we could have a good clean recording of this event. I'm gonna give you just a minute to uh, submit your poll responses so we can have a good idea of who's in our audience today. We're excited for you to join us. All right, and with that, um, I'll end the poll, even if you haven't quite finished it. Um, thanks for participating. We've got a good mix of people today. It looks like a nice mix of information technology, professionals, continuing ed, a few others. Um, a mix of doing micro-credentials badging and comprehensive learner record. And most of you are in the process or investigation stage today. There's a few um, outliers in the other areas, but thanks for joining us today. At this point, I will turn it over to my colleague, Dan, to um, get us a little more information before we uh, dive into the demonstration. Thank you so much, Kelly. Um, I'm Dan Blickensterfer, and I'm the Digital Credentials Technical Program Manager here at, at IMS Global. I primarily support the open IMS standards related to the digital credentials, what we call the digital credentials ecosystem, uh, to include the open badges and comprehensive learner record or CLR standards. The Competencies and Academic Standards Exchange or CASE standard is also a part of that larger digital credentials ecosystem and case features in today's presentation as well. Today, I'm joined by my colleague, Andy Miller, who led the effort to create the three Wellspring demonstration or reference implementation software applications. He'll be taking us through scenarios that show skill-based hiring workflows. Uh, I'd like to take a few minutes to first contextualize the Wellspring initiative, give you a bit of background for the demonstration, and then I'll hand it over to Andy for the demo itself. So a little bit of information about, about Wellspring. The recently completed phase two of the Wellspring initiative really had three major parts. And we'll have more information, links to more information on Wellspring that you can dive into as, as much as you like. First really was the, the, the project for education providers working with employer partners and teams to map their outcomes and competencies to job roles and industry, and industry standard frameworks. And we'll see more of that in today's demo. Uh, primary research into employer readiness for skills-based hiring was another piece. And finally, really, and this is really the bulk of today's presentation, was the creation of fully functional demonstration software the source code of which is now available to IMS members to form the basis of their own implementations. Uh, what we'll show today is not you know, a product for sale itself, but it's a, it's a real example implementation of a, a virtual talent network. So diving in a little deeper, uh, what do we even mean when we talk about a virtual talent network? Here's an example, sort of visual, that shows many of the actors from the examples that you'll see later in today's demo. At the center of the talent network is the learner, and she's using a digital wallet platform that's compliant with the CLR standard to manage all of her earned digital credentials. These credentials can be degrees, certifications, open badges, as well as any individual earned competencies that she may have. On the left-hand side of this diagram, are, the, the, are both the educational institutions such as community colleges and a high school, as well as an industry standard body that has defined the requirements, uh, the competencies across an entire industry for a certain certification. And on the right are three of the employers today 
uh, that we'll be speaking to that have designed their job descriptions around a set of competencies that they require for a given job role. Those competencies can then be aligned with both the curriculum of educational institutions and with any uh, relevant industry standards. So for our demonstration today, showing how a virtual talent network can connect learners and their earned digital credentials with educational institutions and, employer, and employers seeking to fill job roles, the three applications are the achievement portal, the digital wallet, and the talent tracker. And these are built using the CLR, case and open badges standards. And these three applications together, along with the scenarios that Andy will, will show you, really represent an example of, of how such a, a talent network might work. And so very quickly, uh, just to further sort of contextualize the applications themselves, um, these are example screens from the three applications. This first one uh, just sort of setting the stage. This is the achievement portal. And in this example, a community college has issued a learner an achievement for the completion of a course, as you can see here. Um, the second application is the digital wallet. And this wallet application lets learners import and curate collections of their own digital credentials and then choose to share them with, for example, prospective employers. And finally, the talent tracker. And this application lets recruiters and hiring managers see the most qualified candidates for a job role they need to fill based on the secure digital credentials shared by applicants. Uh, and, the app and, and that helps uh, the machine readability of those credentials uh, helps surface the, the very best candidates. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Andy Miller to introduce himself and more fully demonstrate the reference applications using those realistic scenarios that I mentioned. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing um, and over to you, Andy. Yay, all right, thanks. Hi everybody, Andy Miller. I'm a, a technical standards architect at IMS. We, that, um, my primary role is to work with the uh, project groups that uh, are chartered to develop and enhance um, uh, open standards, um, including uh, comprehensive learner record at open badges. And I saw from the poll, a lot of you are, are looking at uh, open badges and, and to some extent, a comprehensive learner record. And I might note that uh, if you're um, looking at open badges, you're sort of also looking at comprehensive learner records. The uh, open badges are single, um, represent a, a single kind of uh, achievement or competency. And um, when you stack those together to represent something uh, maybe more comprehensive, then that literally becomes a comprehensive learner record. So uh, the comprehensive learner records are sort of like uh, stacked micro-credentials on steroids. What I'm going to show, let's see. So you're going to recognize this, I think. So I can never tell if I'm actually sharing what I hope to be sharing. Do you see uh, three screens? Yes, we do. Perfect. So you'll recognize these from uh, what Dan just showed you. So the achievement portal um, is here on the left and you'll recognize that there's going to be some flipping around between uh, different uh, applications. I'm, I'm going to describe where uh, what application we're in, but also just by recognizing the colors, I think, uh, I hope that'll help you uh, sort of stay um, uh, not lose track of what we're what I'm talking about. So the achievement portal has this blue theme. The digital wallet um, has this uh, orange theme, and the um, talent tracker has this purple theme. I have three scenarios that I'm going to walk through, and um, that sort of are uh, in increasing complexity, and also. Uh, a kind of a different um, uh, take on on where where this um, um, on where the, the the learner 
um, uh, the, the lifelong learner might be entering this kind of uh, um, uh, ecosystem and, and participating in it. The first uh, scenario is uh, starts with the achievement portal and talent tracker. So let me uh, bring up the achievement portal first. Let me walk through this. So in this scenario, uh, Ari Marsden is a student at Beaver Point High School. Beaver Point School District has a health careers program that includes uh, a um, preparation for and then um, taking the Oregon State um, uh, nursing uh, board of nursing, Oregon State, Oregon. Yeah, now I can't remember. Uh, Oregon State Board of Nursing. Uh, they have, oh, it's right there. Board of Nursing has a certified uh, certification test that they um, um, uh, 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 provide that also requires things like um, a certain number of hours participate in a real life. Um, uh, care facility. And uh, the program offered by the school district provides the, uh, the training and manages the, those opportunities to work in the field. And then the students, if they choose, can participate in that certification program. If they pass, then they actually have a certification. They are a certified nursing assistant. In this case, Ari Marsden has done that. And I'm going to show you a little bit about how to look at the data inside of, of this application. This is our, I am signed on now. This is a, uh, as Ari. And I am looking at my record here and each line that is showing here, it represents one achievement. Um, and the, they are indented to show some relationship. So uh, for example, the program, uh, which with licensure includes uh, four different uh, courses including, for example, health careers. This is an introductory course uh, that has all of these uh, um, goals. And the, because it's a course and the teacher can award a score for, uh, for courses, uh, there are results. And in this case, Ari received a B plus score. This is just to show that the, the CLR standard in allows uh, a lot of, begin, it begins to show you that the CLR standard has room in it in the data where you can capture actually quite specific information, including results. In this case, it was a grade point average, but you are a grade, but you can also, uh, for example, capture grade point averages or, uh, or even competencies and mastery of those competencies. Um, and uh, there's a nursing assistant program. Um, and this is also a full year course. And this actually includes those 80 hours of classroom lab inst and lab instruction and 75 hours of clinical training. So this is, uh, this is the course where that uh, training is um, provided uh, or is arranged. And the, here's a result that's captured. There's two results in this one. Uh, Ari received an A in this course. And uh, for clinical training hours, the result was 80. Uh, the required level was 75, which you can see back here in the description. So Ari has this, uh, um, these are the courses Ari completed. Then Ari sat for the um, certification and passed and uh, the certified SN uh, CNA uh, was awarded by the Oregon State uh, Board of Nursing. And this is now Ari's uh, CLR or record from Beaver Point High School. Now let me switch to, uh, let's see, I'm going to, 
go down and I'm going to then switch over to talent tracker. So uh, the talent tracker system is, um, is a stand in for a, a couple different kinds of applications you might find in a human resources mm -hmm. department. Uh, it, this includes a, a, a talent discovery uh, uh, feature where uh, this application can reach out to a virtual talent pool and look for uh, candidates that, that meet the, uh, the qualifications that the um, employer is looking for. It also, this application also has a job uh, applicant tracking system. So that would be the more traditional, you uh, see a job posting and you apply for it by submitting, uh, say a resume or in our case, uh, a, a resume and a CLR. The, in this example, uh, we're going to focus on the talent discovery. Riverwalk Place is an adult um, uh, care facility. Uh, in the same um, region as uh, Riverwalk High School. And they have, um, a, uh, they have developed some, a, a relationship with the school district because they know that that school district has this program that they offer in health careers um, where uh, the Riverwalk Place can um, basically ask the school district for candidates that meet certain qualifications and the school district um, with the student's permission will share uh, candidates that meet those qualifications. The job uh, the job posting that we're going to look at is called certified nursing assistant. It uh, has, I think, what you would expect to see for a job posting, such as a title, a summary, and roles. It also has a series of what are called qualifications. And this, these qualifications are also machine readable. They're, they're designed or built in a, using a, another open standard by a different organization called HR Open. And the standard is called uh, job description language or JDX. And the, uh, this, each qualification is captured as a, as, a qualifi uh, sorry, as a qualification in that standard. And we're gonna look at uh, this first one here, anatomy and physiology. So the title is that they must complete a course on anatomy and physiology. It has a weight of medium. Of course, the, the hiring, uh, the employer can set any weight they want on each uh, qualification. And in this example, we're going to use uh, search terms to, fig, uh, to find the matches, to find the candidates in that virtual talent pool that uh, might qualify for this position. So for example, um, they're looking for a course that has either anatomy and physiology or anatomy and physiology. So two different ways of saying and. And uh, there's another one in here on uh, that they have passed the Oregon State Board of Nursing uh, certification. All right, so we have these qualifications and now I'm going to, and then the employer can launch a candidate search. And here we're seeing it reach out, Riverwalk Place is reaching out to three high schools in that school district, looking for candidates that have um, for this position. Um, as a reminder, this is, uh, um, the student themselves in our ecosystem, they must uh, uh, proactively agree to share uh, for their information to be shared. By default, it won't be shared and the school district will not uh, return their information, even if they are a good match. But if the student agrees um, or their guardian, then 
it is shared and the that search has just been completed. In this case, four candidates came back. The information is uh, anonymized. You, you only know them, the river walk place, the uh, care facility only knows them as candidate one, 20, et cetera. We can show a little bit more information here. Uh, and we can tell that uh, they came, which high school they came from. You can see this first candidate here um, has a score of 310, the second 290 and 260 and then 80. Let's take a look at that candidate to see where did that score come from and how was it calculated? We Here are the uh, six qualifications. I walked uh, you through uh, the anatomy and physiology qualification, and then here's that nursing assistant certification qualification down here. Uh, but also, there was the clinical hours, and you saw, for example, that RE completed 80 clinical hours. And over here on the right, the green check marks mean that the, this candidate, candidate one, has matched on all six qualifications. We can see the details. Um, matched on anatomy and physiology because uh, uh, through a search term match, it was given a medium priority. You may remember that. And because it's medium, it gets th uh, 30 points. Uh, this is all customizable by the employer. There, it, the achievement, that is uh, the match on achieve, um, this it matched on search terms on, with, uh, on the search terms anatomy and physiology. If the achievement uh, demonstrates knowledge, which is what a course achievement would do, then they get an extra 10 points because they wanted a course completion. Uh, the achievement included a result, and we saw that uh, this achievement had a grade assigned, and it included a field of study. In this case, uh, um, the field of study check is in there to um, make sure that this is, this is aligned with what the employer uh, actually does as a business. For a total of 60 out of 120 possible points, add all of those up, they all have a different score. And uh, this candidate has 310. Uh, the employer can look at that, that entire record. Again, it's anonymized. We only, they can only see the student ID. But here's the program. And so this is just a different, different view of what I showed you earlier. Uh, this person completed the intro to health careers course. There was uh, a result of a grade A. They completed the nursing assistant program. Uh, nursing assisting one, in this case, there were two results, a grade of A and um, uh, 80 hours of clinical training. And they received a certification from the um, Let's see, I guess it's not shown here, but they received that certification from the Oregon State Board of Nursing. So this is the whole uh, record and all of these records in both open badges and uh, CLR are verifiable. So for example, if I click on verify, oh, look at that. It says it is missing a data record. Huh? That's a bug in our application. I'll remember not to show that again. So let's see. So here we are. We had 310. At that point, the uh, hiring manager might look at that CLR to see more of the details. And if they decided to, they could click on uh, contact. It will reach back out to, in this case, Beaver Point High School, because that's where that candidate came from, and tell them, uh, Beaver Point High School, that they would like to talk to uh, this candidate. And then they would, uh, Beaver Point High School would uh, facilitate that introduction and then they would talk. Okay, so that was the first example. It involved 
the achievement portable portal. It was at the high school level, and it was with a um, a talent discovery uh, employer that was doing, using talent discovery to find potential candidates, and they were using uh, search terms to find those matches. Now I'd like to show you a um, slightly more advanced scenario. And I'm not actually watching uh, the chat. So Kelly, you'll let me know if somebody does have a question. Will do. Yep, you're good so far. Great. So in this scenario, uh, where I'm in the wallet. A wallet is is uh, uh, learner centered. So, and this can be a lifelong learner at any stage of their career. They uh, uh, using a wallet. They collect their various credentials um, into their wallet, and then uh, they can also record self record achievements that they have uh, completed that maybe came, um, were in a context where the, the, the uh, in a context that does not yet support open badges or comprehensive learner record, uh, but they do want to uh, share that information uh, or record it and then eventually share it. And then they can assemble a custom collection of all the achievements that they have collected and then use that when they uh, say for apply for a job. In this case, Catherine Jones is in, has been an auto mechanic and is applying for a master auto mechanic job at Exeter Volvo. So let's take a look at the record that she has. She uh, has a comprehensive learner record issued by the um, National Institute for Automotive Service Excellence. And it's a record of all of the certifications that she has uh, uh, passed that are offered by the uh, ASE, including, for example, engine repair. So the engine repair uh, certification um, it was issued on uh, uh, October 14th last year. It was issued by the ASE, uh, came from the ASE. So this is, they were the ones that uh, um, issued this uh, and provided the information that could be included in her record. It's, uh, this program is uh, uh, endorsed in this case by IMS Global, but you can imagine it can be in, uh, any achievement can be endorsed by an outside party, uh, such as uh, an accreditor, if, if, if this, this was offered by an accredited uh, learning institution. The new piece of information here that I, I'm going to highlight is alignments. Alignments are a way to uh, link this achievement, we're looking at auto, uh, engine repair, with a framework of, uh, that describes competencies or learning objectives or skills. In this case, it is a, this is aligned to a case framework. Dan mentioned we were gonna talk about case and this is uh, where we start talking about case. And it is aligned to um, a framework that is produced by the ASE. It, and it has a, a, a name of engine repair. And if I go to that, this is what that links to. This is the data in a case uh, server that, that represents that particular, um, uh, in this case, a, a, a test that they um, provide. So it'd be more like an achievement or assessment result. I'm gonna click here, this UI that I'm using um, I'll, can also display that um, that node or item in a tree view. And so what we're looking at here is the entire uh, framework that was put together by ASE and shared. And we can see that engine repair is part of that. And engine repair itself actually has two more, uh, uh, two more, uh, sort of groupings of even more details about what is covered in engine repair. 
And each of those groupings has a whole bunch of different um, uh, competencies or skills that are tested by the ASE. So when Catherine passed the uh, engine repair test, that means that she also passed all of these uh, tests for these particular skills. It's pretty impressive. So let me go back over here. So that's what's, uh, although this looks pretty, like a pretty simple uh, record, it has a lot of information there. We now know that, that Catherine has mastered this, uh, all of those skills that are tested by the ASE, just in engine repair, all of these eight categories have something similar. Let me go back to the dashboard. Catherine also took an online course in electric vehicle technology. And um, when that, when she, uh, at the end of that course, she was issued an open badge by the course provider and she imported it here into her wallet. So let's look at that. Uh, so this was a course offered by um, NSC and it has, uh, well, in this case, uh, it, it was just their name was just the uh, online course provider, but this could have more information in it. But uh, the main point I wanted to point out is that this is a, an open badge, which many of you expressed interest in. And then she has also created one self-issued achievement. And what she chose to do is create a self-issued achievement to represent her experiences as a uh, automotive technician over a nine year period of time. Then she took all of that information and she created a custom collection of achievements that she's going to use to apply for a job at Exeter Volvo. So let's take a look at what's in there. So she put together, in fact, all three things that I just showed you, the uh, online course completion, which was represented by a badge, um, the certification by ASE in all um, eight areas, and her uh, self-issued achievement that, to represent her uh, prior experience. Now I'm going to switch back over to Talent Tracker. And I'm going to switch companies to Exeter Volvo. So they have an opening for master automotive technician. Uh, this looks the same, uh, you know, a, a title, summary, and responsibilities. Uh, and the qualifications um, look similar, but I wanted to point out, for example, this qualification, they would like someone who has passed the engine repair certification uh, test provided by ASE. And the way that they are um, uh, doing that is by aligning this qualification to uh, to something. So let's take a look at what that something is. What they've done is they've aligned that qualification to the same item in a case framework. That's that framework that is offered by Automotive Service Excellence in engine repair. So we just saw that Catherine um, took a test, a series of tests from ASE and received a, a passing score certification in each of those. And each one was aligned to ASE's framework. And now we see that the, this extra Volvo created a series of, of uh, qualifications and aligned those qualifications to the same framework. So let's take a look at what the results look like. So they now they have three candidates. These candidates are not on the talent discovery. These are all candidates that applied for the job. So Catherine assembled that custom CLR. Then she went to the 
uh, Exeter's job uh, posting their careers website, saw a master uh, automotive technician and applied for that job and uh, appended or attached her record that she had created inside of the wallet. So did two other uh, uh, applicants. So there's a total of three applicants. Let's take a look at the highest scoring applicant here. Uh, this applicant has uh, 790 points. They are ranked one. They met 10 out of the 12 qualifications. They did not, uh, their record or what they submitted did not match uh, with these two qualifications. It did match with automotive engine repair. Let's take a look at the details. This is also a medium qualification. So it, it was a match and a medium qualification. So it awarded 30 points. This time the match is because it matched an achievement alignment or, or rather the qualification alignment matched the achievements alignment. So because the two, uh, the achievement and the qualification were both aligned to exactly the same thing in ASE's framework, we know that that's an exact match and they get 20 points. They also have uh, uh, the achievement that, that matched on is considered a strong credential. Um, that's also configurable by the employer and they receive 30 points for that. It had an endorsement, remember that was endorsed and an extra 10 points for that. And again, the field of study for a total of 100 out of 150 points. And uh, uh, the others are similar to that. Uh, there was matches on, on uh, say drivetrain and, and all the others that were aligned to ASE because this uh, candidate, which actually happens to be Catherine, um, had completed all eight of those certifications. So that's uh, sort of the next, so that was the second scenario. It started with a wallet uh, where the learner's own wallet that she had been collecting achievements over a fairly long period of time, uh, assembled them into a uh, custom uh, CLR and then submitted that as data in her job application, then the recruiter or the uh, extra Volvo could review that data and uh, score the machine readable data to give the hiring manager some uh, who to focus on or maybe who to reach out to first. All right, so let me close that one up and get this back. All right. Third and final scenario, I'm gonna switch back over to the wallet. And I'm going to, I'm sorry, over to the portal. And I'm going to switch to a community college. So now we're in higher ed. And uh, now we're looking at Ellis Monday's record. Ellis Monday has created a program at this community college in cybersecurity. Uh, this is the uh, uh, this is a record of the green check marks represent everything that Ellis uh, completed. Uh, the they there were several different first term electives. Um, Ellis chose to take uh, programming in C sharp. There were also many advanced electives. Ellis is particularly interested in. Uh, uh, ethical hacking. So this is in cybersecurity. That's a kind of, uh, that's where you apply um, hacking techniques, but in an ethical manner to, um, uh, to, to help prevent cybersecurity exposures. Um, here we are, uh, discover, covers applying cybersecurity concepts to discover and report vulnerabilities in the network. This one uh, also has alignments. Let's take a look at those. This alignment is to a framework that's put together by the community college. And it's, uh, it, the framework is called Cybersecurity Fundamental Certificate. And it, uh, they call this particular item uh, be recognized as, but 
as cybersecurity professionals who apply ethical, and then I can't read the rest, but we'll let's go over here and see it inside the case framework. This is again, the framework is produced by Riverwell Community College and it's be recognized as a, as a security professional who apply ethical and moral standards in maintaining information security in cyberspace. Let's look at that in a tree. So this is their program objectives in the cybersecurity program objectives. You can see there's uh, five different objectives in there. One of them is this uh, ethical hacking uh, kind of objective. And the new thing that I that did not appear on the uh, prior example I showed you inside of case is this is something down here called exact match of with this uh, double link over here. This means that that this program objective is linked to another framework, some other framework, also in case, but it could be other places. In this example, it is aligned to another framework in case. We can start to see it here. It's in the nice framework. So this is uh, that the node that it is aligned to in that nice framework. And it's the full statement is knowledge of ethical hacking principles and techniques. Let's look at that in the tree view. The nice framework is actually quite large. It has, it's divided up into knowledge, skills, and abilities. In this case, that program objective is aligned to a knowledge um, called knowledge of ethical hacking principles and techniques. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, Ellis's record is aligned to a Riverwell Community College uh, outcome, basically, or program objective, but that objective is is itself aligned to a nice framework node. Okay, so let's minimize this. And I'm going to go back over to Talent Tracker and I'm gonna switch one more time to Plural Games. They are a software developer and they, would, uh, they have a job posting for cybersecurity analysts. It has uh, all the same uh, things as before, but now they have uh, their qualification and their qualifications have alignments. You recognize that I'm sure from before uh, that we that you can have either uh, or you can have keywords and you can also have alignments and, and a combination of both. One of the qualifications that they're looking for in this person would be that they are an expert in ethical hacking. And they've aligned this qualification with, it turns out, the NICE framework. And it happens to be exactly the same node that uh, Riverwell Community College um, uh, linked their framework to. So let's take a look at what happens when a... Um, When uh, when you when one when the learner or the learning provider links to one node in a case framework, uh, the employer links to a, a node in a completely different framework, but there is a link between the two frameworks. So I just did a search. This is a combination. This example is a combination of both talent discovery and job applicants. It, for talent discovery, it reached out to Riverwell Community College. That's where Ellis attends. It also uh, uh, reached out to Plural Games Employee Training. So although this um, uh, Ellis is uh, attending a community college, Plural Games as an employer also offers in, uh, training through LinkedIn Learning in this case. And they track their... Um, employees progress uh, with those courses that they complete. And they run their own instance of an achievement portal, just like the one that Riverwell Community College runs. Uh, they've set it up that when they do 
talent discovery searches, they would like to search across all of their partner learning providers, such as Riverwell Community College, but they also want to search among their own employees to see if there's someone who has uh, started to pursue uh, or, achieve, or actually achieved completed courses in an area of interest. Maybe they are well suited for this pos uh, position. And this, they also, or rather at the same time that it was doing talent discovery across those two pools, uh, it also uh, processed any job applicants that uh, happened to apply. So let's look at what the results of that were. We can see that there are two candidates from Riverwell Community College, one job applicant and one Plural Games employee. Let's look at this first candidate here. There's, uh, you can see that there was a match on ethical hacking. Let me go into the details of that. And the new thing here, there's two new things. One is that it was a high priority, so it received 50 points. Uh, is this phrase right here, the achievement alignment, the achievement was aligned to uh, a node in a framework that has an association to the qualification alignment. So that means the uh, Riverwell Community College's program objective has an association with, it's associated with or linked to the NICE framework because the, uh, the um, uh, Plural Games is aligning their qualifications to the NICE framework. So the, because this is all machine readable, the machine can very quickly follow those links and realize that this is actually an exact match because of that association and awarded 20 points. And then the others are similar. Um, so this is kind of, by, this really highlights the, 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 the breadth of who you can do. Uh, you can process job applicants, you can uh, and talent discovery, and uh, the talent pool can be internal employees or, uh, external employees that have uh, shared, uh, decided to uh, share their information. And uh, all of them can be all brought in and the machine can process all of those applications and really find the best candidates for the uh, hiring manager to um, reach out and connect to. And that is my last demo. Thanks, Andy. Um, we had one question come in in the chat about, you know, if the software was available, and I think we've answered that, that this is um, kind of a reference implementation available for IMS members. So if you're interested in that, um, you can respond to me via email or I'll put a link in the follow up email for all attendees to be able to access that. Are there other questions from our attendees today? Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, I see. I'm I'm looking at the membership uh, uh, page on your website, and I see it's mainly like uh, organization sizes. I I want to ask if an individual uh, wants to join and like become a member in order to to see this code you you mentioned in the chat box. Uh, what's the is it possible and what's the procedure? Um. Why don't you, we'll follow up after email with you on an offline conversation about that. Membership is typically done by organization, but uh, we can have a conversation about options. So I'll make a note to follow up with you. All right, thank you. Yep. How members can use it. Um, thank you, Igor. Um, the, um, um, the software is, uh, is available to members. They can, it is in uh, GitHub. If you're familiar with that, it's a source code repository uh, uh, application. And um, members can download the software and, um, and uh, modify it or, or uh, run it in, you know, internally as they see fit. The only restriction is that you can't take it as is and then offer it as a paid service. That's the only restriction that we have. Um, you can um, 
uh, if you're familiar with software development, there's that word called forking. So you can take this and fork it, basically modify it to be your own uh, version of this. And then you can do anything you want with that. Uh, the license is, allows um, uh, that use case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank, thank you a lot. And what type of licensing are you using? Is it GPL, Apache, or something like that? I'm sorry, I missed the first couple words. What, what type of licensing uh, you are using here? Uh, I understood that I should modify it before using uh, to adopt uh, to our needs uh, uh, as a member. Uh, but uh, of course, as a process, I believe it's a it's I believe it's a modified Apache license. The, the modification uh, is that restriction uh, that I mentioned that you can't uh, uh, you can't cert, you can't charge for it as is. You do have to modify it. Yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, is it written uh, on Python, the link? What language is this? Um, the two, I'm still sharing my screen. The two on the, uh, the Achievement Portal and Digital Wallet are in C Sharp and Talent Tracker Java. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And is it, is it available uh, also for universities? If a university is a member of IMS, it is available to that um, yeah, yeah. member. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, thank you. Great. Any other questions? And for those of you who maybe aren't developers on this, uh, part of this goal of creating this demonstration software was really to show you the power of how your, your programs and your digital credentialing work could actually impact your learners, um, how it can really help facilitate that, that lifelong learning process, and then the option to upskill or move to a new position to really capture their full uh, potential. So um, it looks like there's a question, is the student data from the high school student linked directly to an SIS or is it imported into a separate system? Um, it is not uh, imported or linked. Uh, it, it does, uh, it, it, uh, in, the, in the software, if you were to download it and, and take a look at it, you'll see that it actually has a backend, which uh, essentially reproduces a, a minimal set of SIS type functions where you can define achievements, you can uh, award them, uh, assign grades and things like that. Um, in a real, in an actual institution, uh, uh, that all that data would be coming from the SIS. or the learning management system or a combination of both, but it, it would uh, uh, definitely be coming from another system. You don't have to recreate it. It just uh, transform a little bit. There was a question about the exact licensing terms and I think Kelly or Dan can send you a copy of the license. Yep, we'll make sure yeah, to include yeah. that information um, in the follow-up. And thank you a lot for the demonstration. And will we will we be able to uh, uh, download video of this presentation to look uh, through the use cases again? Yep. So I will send in the follow-up email a link to the recording of this um, for everybody who has registered. So not only if you're here, but if you're watching, if somebody else has registered, that information will go out, and it will be posted on our website as well. So there'll be two options. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Any other questions today? Otherwise, thank you very much for joining us today. We will have another Digital Credentials Roundtable in May. So look for that information to come out shortly. Um, thanks very much, uh, Andy and Dan, for sharing this information and sharing this great demonstration so people can really see the power of it. Um, and have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.